Next question is from Geico Lizard 420 Blaze It. <laughs> wow. Okay. What does 420 it, mean? <laughs> is it bad to deadlift with a rounded back? You know, we we uh we addressed this a lot at the beginning when you first started posting videos of your deadlift because people hear this, right? And then they see that you kind of have this upper back rounding when you Thoracic. deadlift. So people freak out and go like, oh my God, look at your back rounding. Yeah. It's so bad. But they don't realize that that's not the, the lumbar is what we're most concerned about when it comes to rounding. And that's what you got to be careful. And so absolutely a rounded, you know, lumbar spine is very bad when you are deadlifting. But if you're keeping that in a fixed position, then a little bit of natural upper back rounding, especially if your posture is kind of fixed that way, is not bad at all. Yeah. And I'm going to use an example to kind of illustrate, uh, you know, in a little more detail, what is bad and what isn't bad. So I'll use my wrist as an example because it's really easy. So if you look at my wrist, if you're watching this, you can see that I can flex it about that far. So that's as far as my my joint will allow me to go in that direction. And then I can extend it about this far. This is as far as my wrist will allow me to go. My joint will allow me to go in that direction. Everything in between is not the limit of my joint. Okay. So can I support resistance here and here? And here, I can. Here's the problem. If it goes all the way to the end range of motion, and then what is supporting the weight is no longer the muscle, but rather the limited range of mo or the range of motion the of the hinge. joint. Yeah. So if you look at the spine, even the lumbar spine, right? It's got a bunch of joints. If it rounds a little bit, okay, but it's not at the end of its range of motion, you're okay. As long as the muscles are supporting that, you're totally fine. The problem is when the lumbar rounds, and then what's supporting you is not the muscle, but rather the limitation of the joint. So it's pressure on the joint and the discs, and then you're loading that and lifting as much as you can, and the muscles are no longer being supportive. That's where the problems come into play. So a little bit of you know bend or whatever is totally fine so long as it's the muscles that are supporting it, not the range of motion of the joint. Yeah, and with that said too, like you're going to run into situations where you have different like shaped objects that you're going to have to move around and pick up from the ground. It's not going to be so nice and, and uh, balanced out like a barbell where we're going to grab, you know, like a bag of dog food or like a big heavy stone. And guess what? You're going to be protracting your shoulders forward. You're going to be rounding that upper thoracic a bit, but you have to be able to pick it up and yeah. do it with good biomechanics. And you do have that stability and support if you train it properly. Uh, so it, it's all, it's all a matter of like, uh, you know, introduction to that, be able to, to brace properly and, and support your spine and, and have strength in that movement. Totally. There's a, an exercise that was widely used by, um, Greco Roman wrestlers. In fact, if you go, there's videos on YouTube of Soviet era Greco Roman wrestlers doing this particular exercise called the Jefferson curl. So Jefferson oh, yeah. curl, that's always controversial. Yeah. You're standing straight up and you literally with resistance roll all the way down. So it's like rounded lower back, rounded upper back all the way down. Like you're touching your toes and then mm -hmm. you roll all the way up and people who don't understand biomechanics and control will look at that and be like, Oh my God, yeah. why would Greco Roman wrestlers do this? Well, if you watch, some of some Greco-Roman wrestling matches, you'll notice that there are positions and moves where one guy's flat out on the ground, the other guy's got this grip on him, and then what they do is they literally lift him up off the ground. So it's the range of motion is ridiculous. You're going from flat on the ground, but you're standing over the guy, lifting him and flipping him over your back, trying to gain points. In fact, there was a Russian wrestler who was just undefeated. They called him the Russian Bear. I can't remember his name, who was just known for doing this. And they don't get injured because they have stability and strength within that full range of motion. They've now, trained it. Yeah. Right, now, am I saying you should deadlift this way? No. The, what I'm trying to illustrate is so long as it's muscle that's supporting the position and it's not, and you're not relying on the end range of motion of a joint, you're okay. So what does this mean for most of you? For most of you watching this, that means that you want your lumbar spine to remain in perfect position because you probably don't have the strength and stability to even allow a little bit of uh, flex and bend. Now, for advanced lifters, this can change. I've seen some very high level deadlifters who get a little bit of lumbar flexion. Of course, they're not going to range of motion to end range of motion, uh, but they have a little bit of, of, of flexion or a little extra extension with load, but it's totally under control. They're really strong and they're totally safe. So I think that's where this comes from because you see now a little bit of this debate in the, you know, in the fitness world.